Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night. Depending on where you are in this world, God bless you. This is Gloria White coming to you from Utah, USA. Well, we are here in the book of Jasher in the complete Apocrypha, and we are in chapter 19. And this is why God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. And this gives us a lot more detail here and the goings-on than we received in the current King James Version of the Holy Bible. So, hold on. And the cities of Sodom had four judges to four cities, and these were their names, Serach in the city of Sodom, Sharkad in Gomorrah, Zabnak in Adma, and Nemon in Zeboim. And Eleazar, Abraham's servant, applied to them different names. And he converted Shirak to Shakra, Shardad to Shakrura, Zebna to Kizobim, and Ninon Minon to Madzalodin. And by their desire of their four judges, the people of Sodom and Gomorrah had beds erected in the streets of the city. And if a man came to these places, they laid hold of him and brought him to one of their beds and by force made him to lie in them. And as he laid down, three men would stand at his head and three at his feet and measured him by the length of the bed. And if the man was less than the bed, these six men would stretch him at each end. And then he cried out, and when he cried out to them, they would not answer him. And if he was longer than the bed, they would draw together the two sides of the bed at each end until the man had reached the gates of death. And if he continued to cry out to them, they would answer him, saying, Thus will it be done to a man that comes into our land. And when her, men heard all these things that the people of the cities of Sodom did, they refrained from coming there. And when a poor man came to their land, they would give him silver and gold and cause a proclamation in the whole city not to give him a morsel of bread to eat. And if the stranger should remain there some days and die from hunger, not having been able to obtain a morsel of bread, then at his death all the people of the city would come and take their gold and silver which they had given him. And those that could recognize the silver or gold which they had given to him took it back. And at his death they also stripped him of his garments and they would fight about them. And he that prevailed over his neighbor took them. They would, after that, carry him and bury him under some shrubs in the desert. So they did all the days to any one that came to them and died in their land. And in the course of time, Sarah sent Eliezer to Sodom to see Lot and inquire after his welfare. And Eleazar went to Sodom, and he met a man of Sodom fighting with a stranger. And the man of Sodom stripped the poor man of all his clothes and went away. And this poor man cried to Eleazar and supplicated his favor on account of what the man of Sodom had done to him. And he said to him, Why do you act thus to the poor man who came to your land? And the man of Sodom answered Eleazar, it's saying, is this man your brother, or have the people of Sodom made you a judge this day, that you speak about this man? And Eleazar strove with the man of Sodom on account of the poor man. And when Eleazar approached to recover the poor man's clothes from the man of Sodom, he hastened and with a stone smote Eleazar in the forehead. And the blood flowed copiously from Eleazar's forehead. And when the man saw the blood, he caught hold of Eleazar, saying, 
Give me my hire for having rid you of this bad blood that was in your forehead, for such is the custom and law in our land. And, Eli and Eleazar said to him, You have wounded me and require me to pay you your hire? And Eleazar would not hearken to the words of the man of Sodom. And the man laid hold of Eleazar and brought him to Shadra, the judge of Sodom, for judgment. And the man spoke to the judge, saying, I implore you, my lord, thus has this man done. For I smote him with a stone that the blood flowed from his forehead, and he is unwilling to give me my hire. And the judge said to Eleazar, This man speaks truth to you. Give him his hire for this is the custom in our land. And Eleazar heard the words of the judge, and he lifted up a stone and smote the judge, and the stone struck on his forehead. And the blood flowed copiously from the forehead of the judge. And Eleazar said, If this then is the custom in your land, give you unto this man what I should have given him, for this has been your decision, you decreed it. And Eleazar left the man of Sodom with the judge, and he went away. And when the kings of Elam had made war with the kings of Sodom, the kings of Elam captured all the property of Sodom, and they took Lot captive with his property. And when it was told to Abram, he went and made war with the kings of Elam, and he recovered from their hands all the property of Lot as well as the property of Sodom. At that time his wife, the wife of Lot, bore him a daughter. He called her name Paltith, saying, Because God had delivered him and his whole household from the kings of Elam. And Paltith, his daughter, grew up, and one of the men of Sodom took her for a wife. And a poor man came into the city to seek a maintenance, and he remained in the city some days. And all the people of Sodom caused a proclamation of their custom not to give this man a morsel of bread to eat until he dropped dead upon the earth, and they did so. And Paltith, the daughter of Lot, saw this man lying in the street, starved with hunger, and no one would give him anything to keep him alive, and he was just upon, upon the point of death. And her soul was filled with pity on account of the man, and she fed him secretly with bread for many days. And the soul of this man was revived, for when she went out to fetch water, she would put bread in the water pitcher. And when she came to the place where the poor man was, she took the bread from the pitcher and gave it to him to eat. So she did many days. And all the people of Sodom and Gomorrah wondered, how could this man bear this starvation for so many days? And they said to each other, This can only be that he eats and drinks, for no man can bear starvation for so many days or live as this man has, without even his countenance changing. And three men concealed themselves in a place where the poor man was stationed to know who it was that brought him bread to eat. And Paltith, daughter of Lot, went out that day to fetch water, and she put bread into her pitcher of water, and she went to draw water by the poor man's place, and she took out the bread from the pitcher and gave it to the poor man, and he ate it. And the three men saw what Paltith did to the poor man, and they said to her, It is you then who have supported him, and therefore has he not starved nor changed in appearance, nor died like the rest. And the three men went out of the place in which they were concealed, and they seized Paltith and the bread which was in the poor man's hand. And they took Paltith and brought her before their judges, and they said to them, Thus did she do, and it is she who supplied the poor man with bread. Therefore did he not die all this time. Now therefore declare to us the punishment due to this woman for having transgressed our law. 
And the people of Sodom and Gomorrah assembled and kindled the fire in the street of the city. And they took the woman and cast her into the fire, and she was burned to ashes. And in the city of Adma, where was there was a woman to whom they did the like, for a traveler came into the city of Atma to abide there all night, with the intention of going home in the morning. And he sat opposite the door of the house of the young woman's father to remain there, as the sun set when he had reached that place. And the young woman saw him sitting by the door of the house, and he asked her for a drink of water. And she said to him, Who are you? And he said to her, I was this day going on the road and reached here when the sun set, so I will abide here all night, and in the morning I will arise early and continue my journey. And the young woman went into the house and fetched the man bread and water to eat and drink. And this affair became known to the people of Adma, and they assembled and brought the young woman before the judges, that they should judge her for this act. And the judge said, The judgment of death must pass upon this woman, because she has transgressed our law. And this, therefore, is the decision concerning her. And the people of those cities assembled, and brought out the young woman, and anointed her with honey from head to foot, as the judges had decreed. And they placed her before a swarm of bees, which were then in their hives, and the bees flew upon her and stung her, that her whole body was swelled. And the young woman cried out on account of the bees, but no one took notice of her or pitied her, and her cries ascended to heaven. And the Lord was provoked at this, and at all the works of the cities of Sodom, for they had abundance of food and had tranquility among them, and still would not sustain the poor and the needy. And in those days their evil doings and sins be became great before the Lord. And the Lord sent for the two, angel two of the angels that had come to Abram's house to destroy Sodom and its cities. And the angels rose up from the door of Abraham's tent, and they sat in after they had eaten and drunk. And they reached Sodom in the evening, and Lot then was sitting in the gate of the Sodom, sitting in the gate of Sodom, and when he saw them, he rose to meet them, and he bowed down to the ground, and he pressed them greatly and brought them into his house, and he gave them victuals which they ate, and they stayed all night in his house, and the angel said to Lot, Arise, go out of this place you and all belonging to you, lest you be consumed in the iniquity of this city, for the Lord will destroy this place. And the angels laid hold upon the hand of Lot, and upon the hand of his wife, and upon the hands of his children, and all belonging to him, and they brought him out and set him outside the cities. And they said to Lot, Escape for your life, and he fled in all belonging to him. Then the Lord rained upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah, and upon all these cities brimstone and fire from, out of, from the Lord out of heaven. And he overthrew these cities, all the plain and all the inhabitants of the cities, and that which grew upon the ground. And Ado, the wife of Lot, looked back to see the destruction of the cities, for her compassion was moved on account of her daughters who remained in Sodom for they did not go with her. And when she looked back, she became a pillar of salt, and it is yet in this place until this day. And the oxen which stood in that place daily licked up the salt to the extremities of their feet, and in the morning it would spring out afresh, and they again licked it up until this day. And Lot and his two of his daughters that remained with him fled and escaped to the cave of Adolam, and they remained there for some time. And Abram rose up early in the morning to see what had been done to the cities of Sodom, and he looked and beheld the smoke of the cities going up like the smoke of a furnace. And Lot and his two daughters remained in the cave, 
and they made their father drink wine, and they lay with him. For they said, There was no man upon earth that could raise up seed from them, for they thought the whole earth had was destroyed. And they both lay with their father, and they conceived and bore sons. The firstborn called the name of her son Moab, saying, From my father did I conceive him. He is the father of the Moabites unto this day. And the younger also called her son Benami. He is the father of the children of Ammon unto this day. And after this, Lot and his two daughters went away from there. And he dwelt on the other side of Jordan with his two daughters and their sons. And the sons of Lot grew up. And they went and took themselves wives of the land of Canaan, and, and then begat children, and they were fruitful and multiplied. As Paul Harvey would say, and that is the rest of the story. And as always, I love you. Such evil. Hmm.